The keyboard prowess and great wizardry there, Rick Wakeman, on Hands Back from uh, the Journey to the Centre of the Earth album. And Rick is joining us on the line this afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Now, it's Rick Wakeman's grumpy Christmas stocking tour going on. Yeah. And are you grumpy at Christmas or do you actually enjoy it? I love Christmas, but I do get grumpy like everybody else, really. I just find it's a, it's a lovely time. It's one of those times of the year when you can actually put all your worries and troubles, and this is for everybody, to one side and have a smile on your face and in, overindulge. And then when it's all over, go right back to normality again. Now, let's have a record of your choice. And this, I believe, from Rick Derringer. Yeah, I love Rick Derringer. I was out in America many years ago when he recorded this, and I heard it on the radio, which was Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, which is, he did a studio version and a live a live version. Weren't keen on the live version, but I did like the studio version a lot. And I searched forever to try and find this single because it was never released in the UK, uh, uh, or not until later, on some compilation or whatever uh and i finally managed to find it and it has one of the pride of places on my jukebox it's just a great rock and roll single that's rick derringer and rock and roll hoochie coo chosen by rick wakeman so i'm fascinated to hear you've got a jukebox is it a bell and me or what, what have you got no it's a world it's a okay it, it's a world it's a from the from the 60s i bought it uh Crikey, in the early 70s. No, that's not true. I bought it in the early 80s and just went around slowly collecting singles from everything from sort of junk shops to record shops to try and get uh, a batch that I really, really, really like so I can actually hit the thing at random, any of the, the letters and numbers and whatever comes up, I know I'm going to like. I think I've pretty much got everything I like on here now. Now, I once heard you describe the band, yes, we were the original Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. with, with you in there, possibly, but the rest of them, I thought they were quite serious, dedicated to music bunch of chaps, were they not? Yeah, but doesn't that make it even more Spinal Tap? Because uh, it took it so seriously that it became Spinal Tap. Uh, I think a lot of the music industry is, is Spinal Tap. I mean, I, I still, to this day, when anybody asks me... Uh, you know, what it was like in the 70s, for example. I just told him to go and watch the director's cut of the Spinal Tap film. Um, Harry Shearer is a great friend of mine, um, and we often sort of, like, like talk about it, and he said, uh, you know, they didn't have to make things up. It was all there for the taking. <laughs> and you took it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I say, always said to Harry, if ever you make a, a sequel, now count me in, please. Now, you've selected a song by uh, James Taylor, and uh, Carly Simon. And I was watching a video of them do this song. And, I, I mean, Carly Simon had just had so much energy, looked so fantastic. I've never seen James Taylor move on stage so much. He was actually jiving with her at one point. I mean, they're obviously... That's right. I know the video you're talking about. It's fantastic. It's a, um, what's interesting is the cover of a cover of a cover, as, as you won't know, Mockingbird's an old old song. Uh, Charlie and his Fox did it initially, I think, as a, a sort of a... Uh, a sort of a rock type version and uh when james taylor and carly simon re redid it uh i remember the first time thinking oh because the charlie fox and uh and ennis fox were such a good version i thought oh i'm going to be disappointed and then i heard uh james taylor and carly simon's version i thought this is even better and uh, and you're right, the video, I urge everybody to look at the video online because it is such, it's, you can see the audience, just they're just loving it. Well, there's so much love between uh, James and Carly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, they both, even, I know the, the video is quite old, but they, they still look good to this day. Uh, James Taylor and Carly Simon and their wonderful version of Mockingbird chosen by a guest on Radio 2 Sounds of the 70s, it's Rick Wakeman. You mentioned uh, they look still good to this day. How are you looking these days? Um, you know, some days I think, yeah, hey, you're doing all right. And then I look in the mirror and go, no, you're not. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, very, it's very strange. I mean, it's, uh, I mean in, you know, so apart from the dreaded arthritis, and diabetes, I still feel the same as I did when I was much, much younger. But... Uh, 
Uh, I suppose the secret is really don't look in the mirror too much. It's the same as everybody else. You have, you have decent days and lots of decent days. And when you look in the mirror, don't stand sideways. <laughs> That's a very good piece of advice, yeah. <laughs> Now, I noticed, uh, talking of videos and doing a bit of research, and I saw a photograph of uh, uh, at the piano that you learnt on, an upright that belonged to your dad. Yeah, still got it. It holds so many memories. Even when I sit and and, and play at it, it's uh, it's still... I, I, I still suddenly find myself going right back into the into the 50s and 60s when I was learning on it. You can't help but remember. Now, you've been clean and sober and no cigarettes for, what, about 15, 20 years, is it? Oh, and the rest, actually. I gave up smoking in 1979, so that's, uh, what, 43, 44 years, something like that. And I stopped drinking in 1985, which was a little bit enforced because, basically, um, uh, the the alcoholic was attacking every available organ in my body, including my brain, and uh, the doctors just said, look, if you keep doing this, you're going to die. And I thought, you know what, I really like it on this earth. I really enjoy myself and I enjoy the music and I, so I'll give up. And so I did. And that was August 1985. So that's 38, 37 years, something like that. My math is not great, but I think it's something like that anyways. It's a long old time. The reason I asked you about sobriety and all of that and how long you've been off it was... Um, uh, I, I don't know whether it's a long story, whether we've got time for dinner with Keith Moon in your wild <laughs> days. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you quickly. Uh, we were in Australia, and I'll shorten it a bit, but Keith, um, he was there down doing The Who's Tommy. And he was playing uh, The Wicked Uncle. And he, he, I was down there with, with Yes, and we had a day off, and he called me up and said, there's a great restaurant uh, he said, I'd love to go to. He said, did you fancy it? And I went, yeah, that'd be nice. He said, we both got a night off. I went, great. And he said, um, can you book it? He said, because, he said, if you do it in my name, he said, we won't, won't even be allowed anywhere near the place. I said, yeah, no problem. So I booked the restaurant and uh, off we went. And when we arrived there, the the <laughs> maitre of the restaurant, he looked terrified because he recognised Mooney immediately. But, you know, there wasn't much he could do because it was booked in my lane and uh, my name. And they put us at the table right in the corner. And the waiters, they, they were terrified. Mooney was an absolute gentleman. He was polite to everybody. Uh, some people came across and asked if he was doing all. He did all the all the grass. I did some as well. And he was the, absolutely amazing. So unmoony, it was incredible. And you could see the whole place relax and the waiters and the maitre d' relax. And it came came to the end. And I said, uh, uh, you know, "Can we have the the bill?" He said, "Oh, I okay, said so you, you pay at the counter." I went, okay, that's fine. I got up and I said, oh, my treatment, and he went, no, yeah, I said, yeah, he said, well, we'll sort it out later. So I got up and walked through all the tables up to the where the, 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 the desk was. And then when I got there, I suddenly heard all this commotion behind me. And Keith had actually climbed on the chair, got on the table, and he was walking across all the tables up to where you had to pay, <laughs> and it was carnage. And, and he got off the other end, and he had that toothy grin, and he just looked at me and said, run! <laughs> and, we, and, and we did. We we both ran, and we, we, we sort of parted company somehow. I got back to the hotel where um, I was met by the uh, <laughs> Australian constabulary, who said, uh, you're coming with us. And I went to the police station where Mooney was there. And he said, it's all right, Bill's coming. That was their manager. Bill Cohen. He said, he'll sort it out uh, and pay for everything. Which, uh, and uh, and I was, uh, that, that was the story of Mooney, that um, the management, always, your, you know, or Wiggy or one of the people who worked for him used to come and sort everything out. Well, Rick, it's been lovely talking to you, as always. Enjoy your grumpy Christmas stocking tour. Thank you, I will. Well, you can remember a song from Argent, can't you? I can, yeah. I love this one. Uh, hold your head up. So, I mean, Rod's a, a very underrated uh, organist. Uh, lovely guy, Rod. Great writer, great player, great singer, and always great value. Thank you, Rick. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure, sir. Bye-bye now.